Buckeye Nation has always traveled well, and this weekend as Ohio State heads to Indiana, Memorial Stadium will be packed. The Hoosiers announcing today the game's officially a sellout, their first since 2010. Mark has more on the Big Ten opener between a pair of 4-0 teams. Urban Meyer's Buckeyes have won 24 straight Big Ten regular season games, yet twice in that streak, the lowly Indiana Hoosiers have nearly pulled off the upset, including last year when the Buckeyes trailed in the third quarter before Jalen Marshall, who has now earned the right to wear number seven, returned a punt for a touchdown and then scored three more times in the fourth quarter. Yeah, it, it, felt, it felt real good, you know, especially to help the team the most I could. Uh, and especially scoring four touchdowns, you know, in one game. It just made me feel like, you know, I, I had finally accomplished, you know, what I, what I came to do and was to be, you know, a good Buckeye football player and help the team win. Uh, they're just, they're solid, you know. Um, they come out with something. They give it their all every time they play us. Um, you know, last year they had a great running back yeah. who was, uh, yeah, and, you know, he gave us a little bit of work. Um, and I know that their defense does some things too that can give offenses a little bit of trouble. So um, they just come out kind of, you know, ready to go. And that's something that we have to do. We just have to be from the start of the game, uh, ready to do what we do, um, be able to make adjustments. And I think that's going to be huge and then just continue to play throughout the game. And that IU defense, historically a 3-4, which has given OSU fits early this season, has made some changes. No, their first game they did in the last three games, they are all 4-3. So uh, first game, they, sh they had uh, some difficulties in their first game, but they've, they've gone all to 4-3 uh, defense the last three games. Yeah, I mean, obviously they, they did some things that kind of slowed us down, gave us a little trouble, so I don't know why they wouldn't go back to that. I mean, you know, if, if it has a proven track record, why not do it again? Um, but obviously we, we're going to have our scouting report and, you know, hopefully have some of those things that tripped us up earlier last year cleaned up. So, um, you know, I'm confident with our game plan going and it'll be, uh, you know, really, really well. Ohio State's tight ends and fullbacks coach Tim Hinton spent a year as Van Wert's head coach. Meanwhile, Indiana's tight ends and, foot and fullbacks coach is James Patton, the Allen East grad. So an interesting connection there as Mike Miller from WIMA 1150, our Buckeye insider, joins us as Ohio State gets ready to take on the Hoosiers, who are 4-0, best start in 25 years. <laughs> they got a five-game winning streak dating back to 2014. Yet, those four wins this year by a combined 25 points. So they haven't exactly been beating up on great teams, some decent teams, yep. but they've been some narrow victories for the Hoosiers. Yeah, to me, that's the thing. I, I respect the fact that the Hoosiers have won their first four games. Plus, they went on the road and, and beat Wake Forest for what that's worth, uh, uh, an ACC team, a Power Five conference team. But I think the alarming uh, thing for Kevin Wilson and his staff is the lack of success they continue to have with their defense. All of those games, excepting Wake Forest, were wire job games. They had to win it at the end, and they still continue to just surrender lots of yardage and lots of points. That's a bad formula heading into the conference. Defensively, 117th in the nation in total defense, 126th yeah. in passing. We see a Cardell Jones coming off the win over Western Michigan with a little bit of refound confidence. That could be a recipe for Ohio State. If they can connect on those deep balls, maybe we will see that 520-yard passing day from Jones. Well, I think you're right. I mean, the potential is quite obvious in that sort of a situation. The way the Ohio State offensive line protect, protected Cardale against Western Michigan, one would have to anticipate more of that uh, Saturday over at Bloomington. That gives him time. If he hits a few passes, that opens up the running attack and a whole host of possibilities over there at IU. So, yeah, I think the, the real story to watch for the most part, if IU can't slow Ohio State down, then their good offense is going to be irrelevant. Hoosiers offensively, in many ways, at this point in the season, better than Ohio State's. Nate yeah. Sudfeld, their veteran quarterback, healthy after missing most of last season, has thrown seven touchdowns to just one interception so far this year. Now, this is a silver bullet defense that has scored in three straight games, and they're eager to make it four straight games. <laughs> yeah, this is a good challenge for the Ohio State defense. It's another aspect of this game. Frankly, I'm looking forward to Sudfeld, like Cardale Jones. He's a big guy. He's 6'6". He might be slightly bigger than Cardale, believe it or not. He's 6'6". He's got a lot of experience. He's played a ton of football. He throws with authority. He's smart. 
you know, so that in that sense, uh, IU it, it brings quite a bit to the table, and we know about some of their other weapons with their receivers and their their running backs. So yeah, I'd say look out. The Buckeye defense needs to be on alert. Well, and Western Michigan exposed some problems with Ohio State's interior defense. Yeah. A lot of yards rushing given up by the Buckeyes, and they're going up against. Jordan Howard, a kid who transferred from University of Alabama at Birmingham after the Blazers football program was torn apart and discontinued. So he's allowed to play immediately at Indiana. So the Hoosiers, after graduating Tevin Campbell, don't miss a beat in their backfield. It, well, that's correct. Although I'm going to buy uh, what uh, what Luke Fickle sort of suggested, and even Urban Meyer to that point, that largely once the schematic adjustments were made by Ohio State midway second quarter and second half moving on against Western Michigan, the Broncos weren't nearly as successful running the football. So I'm not maybe as nervous. We'll see how legitimate Jordan Howard's big yardage is. Jordan Howard, second in the nation in rushing 168 yards a game. He is the co-Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week, while the Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week right now is Ohio State punter Cameron Johnston as the Buckeyes special team. A great job against Western Michigan, blocked two field goals, blocked a punt that was negated, and then had some great punting by Johnston, did not allow any punt return yardage. And you're talking about the special teams unit that had a great game against Indiana a year ago that Jalen Marshall's punt return against the Hoosiers is what spearheaded Ohio State's second half comeback. No question about it. What's great, what to me, what's an excellent sign with the special team success is that guys are chomping at the bit to move up the, uh, the pecking order and get into the two deep, if not start, at any given moment for Ohio State. And as we know, uh, that's the pathway to more playing time is perform well on special teams. And I think it's a direct uh, uh, example of that. All right, thank you very much, Mike. As Ohio State gets ready to take on Indiana and the Hoosiers with a other local connection besides James Patton, their third string long snapper is Dan Gonsal from Ottawa Glandorf. So something to keep an eye on perhaps late in the game to see if the, the kid from OG can get in yeah. for the Hoosiers. Andy, back to you.